C Doc again. What's up, y'all? It's your man, So Chuckified here. It is Tuesday night, new time, new bat channel. Actually, same bat channel, new bat time, 8 30 p.m. over here in the East Coast. For all you people out in the West Coast, you probably just got off work and you're sitting in traffic watching this stream as we speak. As you know, this is It's C Doc again, where we sit down and talk to the man behind the boards. Uh, who has been described as a sloppy scratcher by Chuck D himself. Um, he can um, testify that he did hear that, but it was a good thing, apparently. Spit Slam fam, we got some uh, Al J in the house. What's up, playa? Uh, so without further ado, we got a good show tonight. I'm pretty excited about it. I was so excited. I wore my Spit Slam shirt. You can pick those up. I believe on our Bandcamp page, but CDOC can let you know if that is the case. But we've got we've got a special guest tonight. I think you all are going to be super hyped about. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on the man, the the headliner, if you will. Um, and this would be the end of the uh, warming up of said crowd. Uh, so what's up, Doc? <laughs> Sloppy scratcher in the house. That's right. Yeah. Sloppy scratcher, baby. Yeah. What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hanging in, man. Hanging in. The studio is yeah. a bit of a mess. Uh, busy work week and uh, stuff everywhere. So that's got me crazy. But I don't know if you've mm -hmm. noticed. Got a brand new poster on the wall. <laughs> you took away one of my 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 uh, show things that I was going to bring up. But yes, yes, let's uh, talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, I already noticed. There's a there's a. Uh, there's an error on it. I goofed up, but that's all right. It's a, it's a small <laughs> error, so I'll fix it for the next run. But yeah, I got got my Spit Slam record label group, the first four, our first four years of releases. So uh, first four, all right. Yeah, yep. Cheese monger. Yeah, I saw that earlier. So, oh, did you see it? Yeah, I was. Uh, we were busy yeah, talking. So yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I'm getting one of those in the mail for Christmas. Anyway, uh, JB's in the house. I was actually trying to figure out how to contact her today and apparently you can't friend her on facebook so jb i don't know what that's all oh. about i was going to give you grief for not being there last week yeah 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 you got to give her a hassle for not being around so yeah well she's probably knee deep in some daddy o stuff you know yeah keeps yep. keeps things prolific and busy and all that good stuff exactly break north radio in the house what up hollywood hollywood Jeez cheese in the house what up bro we got shan norain is it norain norain what up shan That's a new new viewer welcome yeah. to the show shan welcome uh any maybe it's mc shan perhaps <laughs> maybe i mean the show is getting around it is and and we got we got heavy hitter tonight we got one of the oh got a legend that i'm so excited i'm really excited for uh for this episode so you know, for this you and me both, man. Yeah, I have to. I have to be honest. I mean, as you know, I'm not nearly as uh, well researched as you are. I.e., I don't have a a mind that exudes everything hip hop or the culture or whatnot. I mean, I know enough to get by. You do, um, but um, you, hey, you're you're shorting yourself. Yeah, you 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 got to take some credit there. It's all right though. All right. It's, all well, it's always a, that, but... hip hop is always a learning process. It's history, man. So it, it really is. And it's so um, it's so fun to, to learn new stuff. And so when you turn me on to our guest, um, I went down the rabbit hole. I was talking to him before we came on the show and I was just like, oh, my God, like I just can't wait to read more and more. And I listened to a lot of their stuff on Bandcamp yeah. uh, today. Um, it's really cool, man. Yeah. Oh, what up, Super Al? Cool. Knackworth in the house. Gonna say what up to Al? So, Al, yeah. Al, Al. We, we also got uh, Al J's in the house, isn't he? Yep, Al J in the house. Yep. Black Medine holding Black it Medine down. That's what's up? Yeah. We should just have our uh, next Spitzland meeting here on the show. Well, <laughs> we should do that. Oh, everybody. yeah, we should do that. We should do that. And here I was thinking my presence would not have been missed. Oh, oh JB. No, come on, JB. You've been on all the other, you were around for all the other episodes, you know? Oh, ADA yeah. in the house. What up, ADA? 
What's up? Man, you know everybody. It's it. Well, ADA is uh, works with our our tonight's guest. So, oh, you, uh, okay. Good to see him around. Yeah, we had someone from Spain. I'll let our guest talk about that. But a person from oh, Spain yeah. saying, "I'm sad. I couldn't couldn't make it." You know. So, I mean, we've got people watching from everywhere. Yes, I it's can't a, go anywhere, dude. I was in Kroger today, and somebody's like, "Oh my God, there's that guy." <laughs> they were like, "Are you, are you on that show at Sea Dog again? Are you so chuckified? <laughs> Damn right I am." See, yeah, that's so. how that's how it is. Time Zone Lafontaine in the house. What up, bro? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, Alabama in the house. Alabama Gloria in the house. All right, Gloria, double G's. Now there's the missus. Hi, oh, babe. Oh Lord, she's she, upstairs she, with the she over, creeps, with the brand new phone. <laughs> Sunshine, greetings from Ohio. Uh, Ohio. Ohio, that's right up the road from me. Yeah, and not far from me either. So it's in between yeah, the it's in, in between the two of us. I think they call that betwixt. Ah, betwixt. indeed. Betwixt. Yeah. Well, let's roll into our next segment here. Let's look at the set list here. Mm. Um hmm. let me uh let me move us to the side so folks can see that. So we're in the in the midst of the what up doc, which is just where we banter and talk to you fine people for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. We appreciate yes. that. So thank you. Uh, of course, after that, it's the day in rap and his hip hop. I never can't say that. Like that's like <laughs> one of the most difficult titles. I have more issues. This day, with that. I think if you put the emphasis on this, it kind of rolls yeah. out from there. This day this in day rap and hip hop history. In hip hop history, it's it's quite an alliterative jumble. Flatline from Hip Hop God says, "Where's Davy J at? He needs his own segment." You know, I actually thought about. Actually, I was gonna I was gonna do Ask Rocco. So, you know, because <laughs> Rocco gives better answers. So, um, you know, if anybody has a question for the next episode for Rocco, uh, you know, we'll pick the best question and, and maybe I can get him to give us an answer. Oh, so. that'd be fantastic. David J, like, you know, I, what I probably what I was most saddened by when we met up for breakfast during Thanksgiving weekend was I didn't get to talk to Davey as much. Oh yeah. Usually, you know, last time when we ate together, like he was sat right beside me. So I like, I got the deets, like I knew everything. Right. Yeah. But I did out him about having a girlfriend. Y'all didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, I, I just found out that he's got a chorus concert coming up next Monday and, uh, she's in chorus too. So I finally get to meet his lady friend. Oh yeah. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to embarrass the hell out of him. You know, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mars, right? He was busy flirting with your daughter, so oh, Irie, was he was he flirting with Irie? No, with uh, with Charlie, with Charlie, yeah. oh, Lord, yeah, Charlie, man, you yep. can't talk to her about anything that has to do with <laughs> with that. You know, she's how old is she, 11, 12, 12, she's turned 12. Good Lord, oh, Davy likes yeah. older women, so well, you know. So does Rocco. Yeah. Uh, JB, I can be found as so chuckified or you call, you can find me at uh, Chuck Stevens, S T E P H E N S. Uh, so feel free to hit me up there. All right. So, um, and then our last, I kind of gave away um, who our guest is tonight, but I, I love this last bullet. The down by law switch, the licks master mix, which means a lot to our guest. Uh, do you know anything about that? Oh, I, 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 I can't wait to, to get into that. So, okay. Yeah. So you knew the name of the, the down by law switch, the licks master mix. Hey, <laughs> I kind of remember that. Yeah, of course you do. Damn. I got to remember that. Yeah. I will never stump you. All right. So let's move. Oh, into... You stumped me last time with the, with this, one of the simplest questions. So, you know, it, that, who are the members Jurassic of Jurassic five? five? And I was like, oh, totally. Dude, blind. that's not. That's not uh, that's not simple for everybody. I mean, Jurassic Five is, I know, of course, a well-known group, but still, like for most of us, we I, I couldn't tell you all the the members of Jurassic Five. I would have no. said like I'd have had T Rex, I'd had Brontosaurus, <laughs> I'd have had I don't know. 
<laughs> All right, I'm getting the dad jokes going here. Let's let's kick into this day in rap and hip hop history. Back from 1993, December 7th. Yeah, you turned me on to this one. Yeah, um, Ice Cube, Lethal Injection. Yeah, his uh, fourth solo album. Fourth after, solo album after leaving NWA. Yeah, yep. the National Wrestling Alliance. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so what are your thoughts on uh, Lethal Injection? I, I think I know, but I want everybody else to hear. Well, me personally, I mean, I liked Lethal Injection. Um, I really look forward to it when it was coming out. Uh, I think there's about, I personally think there's half a, a great album in there. Um, you know, he came out of the gate with America's Most Wanted, Bomb Squad, Classic, record it's just you know what an amazing debut followed followed it up with death certificate which arguably is a better album you know or more focused so Mm -hmm. eh, you know um i prefer death certificate to america's most but i mean you pick either one you're winning so followed that up with the predator which i think is still a really amazing album um fantastic record so the predator the thing about the predator was it gave him a really big radio hit uh which was it was a good day and i think that really affected how he approached lethal injection Mm -hmm. so you know lethal injection has you know how we do it which kind of feels like it was a good day part two you know Um, And the landscape, the sound was changing after, um, you know, yep, there you go. So can't forget um, Kill It Will, man. Yeah, Kill It Will, right. Can't forget Kill It Will, the EP. So, um, but this was his fourth uh, album and, um, and, and it's, it's pretty good. Um, I would, I, I actually think that the the B sides for some of the singles that didn't end up on the album are actually better than what's on the album. So, um, you know, but, uh, but it's cube man. And, and still in his heyday, uh, so to speak. And, um, and there's, there's some great cuts on it. Oh, I was going to play, you know, really though, the instrumental. I know you request ghetto bird, which is a great song. I just didn't have it on tap. Any so. any song where you can get the ah, ah. <laughs> sir knows, yeah. Yep. You know, did I ever tell you that uh Ice Cube story? I mean tell me now. I don't know. Ago. Tell me now. Tell me again. Uh, again, it, it happened in a Kroger. It was not the Kroger I was uh was seen at today and recognized from the show. Oh yes. Uh, it was a different different Kroger. I I used to make uh, I'd, I'd go to target you know when you had inkjet printers you could buy um iron on transfers and just yes. run them through the inkjet yeah so i still have some of those yeah so i made a uh i made a long sleeve t-shirt with a black and white photo of ice cubes high school yearbook photo <laughs> like circa awesome. jerry curl all of it right awesome i know so that I mean, photo i know what you i know which one you're talking about yeah yeah I'll, I'll pull up another iteration of it later but um so you can see how my kids are growing up but um so the bag boy was there and of course he you know it catches people's attention because yes. you know even though i have a very thick new york accent Yes. You know, people mistake me for a country guy who right. would never listen to hip hop. Right. And um, yeah, so he was like, who's that? You know, it said O'Shea Jackson at the bottom. <laughs> right. And I was like, it's O'Shea Jackson. You know it's who that O'Shea is? O'Shea Jackson, yeah. Yeah. Course. I was like, it's Ice Cube. You know, and so I'm I'm thinking, oh my God, like the youth today, you know, they, they don't know who it is. He was like, is that that dude? And are we there yet? And I was like. <laughs> I'm done, dude. Yeah. I'm done. So, yeah. shout out to Cube, man. Get your money. Get, yeah, the, get that movie money, bro. Right? It's all good. Get that movie money. So, hype style uh, in the, real quick, hype style in the house. And he says, Lethal Injection had some nice remixes from QD3. Yes. 
And uh, like I said, the remixes and the B-sides were, were really dope. And also, 88.1X had some intriguing tracks. European fellows, right? Are they? Because I, I always didn't know about that. Yeah, Man, where those guys came from. Three in a minute. I know, right? It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, good call. Good call, hype. And so, uh, we did want to yeah. ask the the group before we before we move further. Oh yeah, so great in question. The chat, yeah. yeah, so there's a great question. So, as uh, C Doc pointed out, lethal injection was kind of maybe the the you know not that not taking anything away from Cube. Yeah, um, I, lethal I, injection I may have been the, the tip the tipping point of when. Yeah, it's kind of the music. end of the classic ice cube, cube period. Yeah. 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 So after Lethal Injection, we'd like to know what is your favorite Cube album after Lethal Injection? Just put it in the chat and we'll opine here on it. But I want to know what yours is, Doc. What's, what's your favorite after Lethal Injection? Uh, <laughs> Come on. I don't even know, man. Um, you know, because he's had some good songs here and there. I, I, You know what? I haven't heard in a long time that I do remember thinking it was pretty good because i didn't care for the first album was the mm -hmm. the second west side connection album oh um i can't remember what a terror is it terrorist terror terrorist threats threats yeah i heard it years ago shortly after it came out and i and somebody let me borrow it and i was like i didn't really like the first one and um but I listened to it. And I was like, "This is actually pretty good." I remember thinking that. I don't know if it still holds up for me, but I, think I might so. have to. Why we thugs, it. man? That's that's a dope song. Wh which one? Why we thugs? Why we thugs? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to. I may have to revisit that one. So. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Word up. All right. Well, that is it for the Ice Cube. The one with Gangster Rap made me do it. I think that was off of. Uh, one right. of the more What's recent it? ones, right? I, I am the West, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. I think, it's, I think it was. There were some good tracks on that one. It's kind of like you said, it was like hit and miss. Oh, Hip Hop Gods. Flatline says, I am the West. Okay. All right. I wrote yeah. that West. That's a good, you know, what I love about West Side Connection and my homeboy QB who never tunes in unless he's trolling me on this chat. He <laughs> loves, I mean, absolutely loves dub C. Oh, and you know, the interesting thing about dub C is like when we went to see cube in concert a couple times, dub C is like his hype man. Yeah. Could you imagine C's having a hype man. man that's dub yep. C. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, um, and DJ train or, or, or not DJ train. I'm sorry. Um, uh, they're, um, Rest in peace, DJ Train. And then rest in peace. Uh, their tour DJ was, uh, oh, my God, I'm blanking out. Help me out, people. Um, who just passed away not that long ago. Um, um, from WC in the Mad Circle. Um, oh, God. I'm the, the, the Crazy Tunes. Crazy. Thank you, Flatline. Yes, Flatline. DJ Crazy Tunes was their, was their tour DJ. Was Cube's tour Flatline. DJ. Yeah, runs hip hop gods. That's why he run, runs hip hop. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. Because for when C Doc blanks out, um, so yeah, rest in peace, crazy tunes. Rest in peace, DJ Train too, from way back in the day. But uh, West Coast legends and uh, does, does so your buddy that's the Dub C fan. Um, mm -hmm. Does he know Low Profile? The first does he know that project? Dub C and Probably DJ Aladdin. Not. That's Probably one. Not. Oh man, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, dope. Yeah. yeah, when Ro when Dubsy Rocco was great. when when Rocco was a baby, I put on um, "Funky Song" by them, and uh, he was like sitting there, like you know, <laughs> jamming to it, I'm like sweet. Yeah, geez, DJ Aladdin, word up. Oh so. wait, I got to put this up on screen. This is fantastic. <laughs> yes, flatline. Yes, you are. That mm. yeah, Break North knows. Low profile record is amazing. Yeah, that album is fantastic. Man, Dubsy has D Dubsy has one of the best rap voices. Yeah, yeah. He, he's just got a good voice. Yep, he exactly. rhymes pretty well. So this is part in the show where we tell you you need to go get the Rap Station Radio app, either yep. on iPhone or Google Play. It supports hip hop in a way that 
you know, it gives you more opportunities to listen to real music. RSTVapp.com. I can uh, tell you it is a dope app. Um, you know, it's not a Spotify. Like you can't, you know, pick and choose and what, but you know, you got 12, I think it's 12 channels, different genres of hip hop. Uh, there's even a uh, female MC channel, uh, instrumentals. Yep. Um, and of course, hip hop gods, uh, you know, rap station. What is it? 365. Yeah. Uh, radio radio program stages. by radio program by the real heads. You know, yeah. in fact, That's in fact, big, shout out to one. Knackwurst because he helps me uh, run the uh, instrumental station. So. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. That's yep. what's up. So that takes us to the next part of our show. Yeah. So why don't you uh, do the honors tonight, Mr. Doc? Well, everyone, I am thrilled about this interview. Um, somebody that I've admired for many years and um, am now, you know, have gotten to work with and collaborate with and, uh, is that he is a hip hop legend uh, and a guy that has inspired countless uh, other artists. Uh, he's your favorite DJ's favorite DJ. And, uh, and, and it's, it's great to have him on the show. So uh, I would like to welcome Douglas Double D DeFranco to It's CDOC again. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. No, well thank said. you, sir. That, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for uh, no, staying thank up. You. Staying oh, up no, it's not past my bedtime yet. Okay, cool. Excellent. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. This is this is really an honor. No, it's, it's great. I, I want you to, for everybody watching right now, I, I would like you to explain your backdrop. So because it has a significance. You know, well, this this is uh the steinsky record collection so this is from steinsky's uh, studio am i am i loud enough there you hear me yes. this is oh, from yeah, steinsky's right. basement and he is listening tonight he is oh, he's there excellent. so you got to be careful oh, wow. what you say <laughs> and um you know but i but i i have nothing but good stuff to say about steve obviously <laughs> uh, obviously of course we would love to to have him on the show at some point too if he's if yeah he's definitely it. i think i think he'd do it yeah yeah that would be very cool i haven't i personally haven't had the chance to talk to steve yet i've only conversed with you but that's yes all right. i need to set up like a like a, a giant zoom call with everybody to get everybody yeah. in on it and it's oh no. yeah also have to say uh glad to see that ada is here tonight in time yes. zone yeah my guys yeah, man. They're part yep. of the crew also. That's a that's very cool because I didn't I knew Time Zone um for a while because I had collabed with him a couple of mm -hmm. times and I didn't realize he was working with you too. So was, Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a great story because it, it started with, with uh ADA, Adam Butler. He got in touch with me I I don't remember what year it was and said I'm a big fan and and just, you know, poured his heart out and uh sent me uh some of the music he was working on and i heard it and i said yeah I, you know this is really good stuff so when we finally met up he came out to new jersey and and uh came down to steve's basement and we hung out and he uh i said how would you like to work on the next double d and steinsky lesson four and of course his head exploded <laughs> and uh and we've had this great relationship ever since and then time zone was almost the same he he got in touch and was a big fan and uh and he offered his serve you know if you ever ever want to do anything and i said yeah of course i do right so i hit him up and he he pulled out that that video, the tw almost twelve-minute video for Lesson Four, that is phenomenal. And then followed it up with with uh, with the craps game. Yeah. Awesome so I just stuff. love the story of you know somebody calling up their uh, their idol and, and right. developing a relationship. Which is that that's exactly what happened <clears throat> with Chuck D and I. So that's right. how I got started with him. You know, working was, with him. And also, I mean, I, the first time I heard a story like that, it was the, the lead singer from uh, Judas Priest had left, Rob Halford, and they found a guy who was in a tribute band. And he sang, he knew all the songs, and he sounded right. like Rob Halford, and he joined the band for I don't know how many years. I know. 
That's so crazy, right? <laughs> but was he as good looking as Rob Halford? That's the question. I don't know. I never saw him in leather chaps, so it's, <laughs> right. I can't say. So is this uh, is this Steinsky here that says Yo Douglas here in the chat? Yeah, that's him, Stephen Stein. Hey, Steve. That's, that's the man. Good to have you, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Don't say anything. So, no. Don't say anything <laughs> that you'll regret later. <laughs> well, my wife's not on the chat. I'm not real worried. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I got that going for me. So I want to dig in here. Uh, this has been a learning experience for me uh, because I've I've actually heard the lessons before, but I never really put two and two together. Uh, and then Doc had had said, you know, we should have you know, Double D and Steinsky on, and I was like, who the f is that? And so, <laughs> That's what most people you know, say. <laughs> well, and and I want to call that out because you know, part of it is you know learning the history and learning uh, the roots of a lot of stuff. And uh, so I went down the rabbit holes. I was telling you before the show came on, and man, I'm just like. What a great one. The website is fantastic because it's like Thank you. You know, all of these uh, great nuggets of, of information, but then also all the dope, like vintage uh, equipment that you have pictures of and, and some of the people that work in your studio. So we definitely want to uh, to dig in here. So, so sure. tell us a little bit about how how it all kind of came together, you know, even ahead of the lessons, what, what got you all into, and I know that you met Steve a little later, but what, what got you into music? Into music? Your, your, well, well just God, into, my, I you know, have to, kind of, that's my, that's my parents, you know, playing lots of music when I was a kid, uh, lots of Frank Sinatra to, to <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> so, uh, and I even have a tape somewhere of myself singing some Frank when I was two years old and my dad, my dad, I guess, was like in the in the late 50s, 57 or 58, bought this tape machine, this giant web core tube tape machine that weighed like 40 pounds, literally. And they'd record me singing. And by the time I was five, I was operating the machine myself. And so I would just, you know, wake up in the morning. My parents were still in bed and I'd start playing with the machine, erasing their tapes and putting my voice on them. So it started at a really, really, really young age and um, being exposed to the music my parents were listening to and, uh, you know, then hearing stuff on the radio, it just, it was like a natural progression to, uh, I don't, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a far piece to get to, get to hip hop, but I'm just into music, I'm into good music no matter what it is so <clears throat> excuse me so so how did you get into hip hop when did when did hip hop come into your life hip hop well the first hip hop i ever would have heard would have been uh, rapper's delight sugar hill gang which was 79 or 80 i guess Se 79 yeah and yeah. i bought the record and at that time i was kind of disillusioned with music that was going on it was sort of the, the new wave thing had already been been uh, like it been happening for a while and it wasn't too interesting and i was listening to some dance music because that was kind of different <clears throat> and uh then i heard uh grandmaster flash on the wheels of steel and that mm -hmm. really blew my blew my head because it's like oh my, what is going on here how what are they doing and then right after that is when i met steve that would have been the spring of 83 and through our, our casual hanging out, he was introducing me to all this hip hop that he was already into for years that I was never, you know, I never heard of. So it was, uh, you know, I have, I thank Steve really for a lot of my musical experiences after the time I was 28. That's, that's, that's a dope. Now, were you already uh, working in so when you met Steve, were you already doing audio stuff? Oh yeah, I, this was we met in '83. So I, my, my I started as an engineer in '74. Okay, I was like 18, and that was, I, that was the year I was born. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good night. Yeah. Um, and uh, I I really wanted to do music work, so I worked in a studio that did kind of like a little bit of everything and I did some big music sessions and it was really pretty hair raising because uh hello you guys still there yeah 
it was pretty hair raising because when you got like a dozen guys in the studio that's a lot of responsibility for somebody who was, was never trained properly i didn't even have anybody really train me on the equipment i had to really learn everything myself right so um after a couple of years of that, I got a job working in a studio that was doing radio commercials because this was 77. So TV, there was no cable TV yet. Right. So radio commercials was, was where it's at. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I had, had a, a, the, the major clients of the studio were record companies. They were all the major record labels like Columbia and RCA, Arista came later, Atlantic, Warner, you name it. So... You, we were doing commercials for all of the new records that were coming out. So once I got into doing those commercials, I started to pick up great, uh, some mad editing skills, as they say. I was going to say, it sounds like something that would have <clears throat> came in handy. Yeah, well, it. Uh, I was I was kind of a little, still a little green when I got that job. I kind of I kind of lied my way into it. I said, yeah, I I could do that, <laughs> knowing that I could, hoping that I could. Right. So I I had to learn. I didn't even know what a what, what the hook of a song was. I'd work with these producers. All right, go to go to the hook, and we'll take that for ten seconds. Well, what's the hook? It's like, <laughs> uh oh, we have a problem here. So like you know, my boss came to me after a month or two. He said, Well, yeah, there was someone that was complaining about you, but I think you're okay. It's like, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I I made it through. And. Uh, and it really, I have to say, it took me many years to to really get up to a point where I could pull off a, le a lesson three, I, I think. And even then, I would, my skills weren't that good. I, I've definitely improved since then. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so so when did you meet Steve, or how did you meet Steve? I met Steve. Uh, he was working at an ad agency, and he came in to do some freelance work. And he says, you know, who can I work with? And they... They said, "Oh, Doug DeFranco." And we met and shook hands, and okay, we'll we'll do this. And I don't even remember what the what the session was. What does he say? Douglas was and is the bomb. Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> what a sweet guy. I got. I have to pay him five bucks every time he says that. Nice. Um. So we did some, you know, real straight ahead advertising kind of work. But we were talking. He saw the records in my room and. And we said, hey, we should hang out. And we started hanging out on Friday nights. And Friday night was Zulu Nation night at the uh, at the Roxy in wow. the city. Mm. So you can just imagine what that meant. It was Africa Bambata and everybody else, uh, Jazzy J. And I can't even think of a lot of the a lot of the guys back then. Red Alert and Chuck right. Chill Out and. It was amazing. It really just that that again blew my head. And uh, it was around August, September, there was an ad in Billboard magazine. A friend says, hey, you see this? There's this contest for this Tommy Boy record. And it was called the I don't I mean, you, you had it before the the switch, yeah. switch the licks. Yeah, let me add it back here so we can. So we can do it justice here. No, no. Second. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. My my system's not as good as uh, it was a docs. There it is. Down by law, switch the licks master mix contest, and it was dreamed up by Monica Lynch and Tommy Silverman of Tommy Boy Records to help promote um, play that beat, Mister DJ, by um, Globe and Whiz Kid, DJ Globe and Whiz Kid. <clears throat> So uh, I saw this ad and I said, oh, man, and ex my exact words, I called Steve. I said, Steve, there's this contest we're going to win. He said, oh, <laughs> yeah, OK. And and the rest is is history. We really we pulled it off. That's that's fantastic. So I, it's a I great story. I want to. Uh... Ah, you see, <laughs> you see, you see, you see, so good. You see? Now we come to the payoff. Now, you did win the contest, yes. obviously. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to I want to nerd out here real quick. Um, 
how did you guys technically how did you put this together back in back in 83 uh, 83 i my studio was was a, a basic production studio i had uh let's see two i had three quarter inch tape machines uh w one was a, a mono machine and the other two were stereo I had a four-track multi-track machine and a, and a one-inch eight-track machine and a turntable, and that was it. So what I would normally do was put the record on the turntable and cue it up and sync it up and then, you know, move up the fader when, when the time came to match it up. And that's how I made, uh, basically, that's how this was made. There were, there were some tape edits in there on the, uh, on the, on the voice samples. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of it was going was going directly from turntable <clears throat> to the multi-track machine, and sometimes I would sync up and just punch in on the same track again. I wouldn't oh, wow. go from track to track to track to track, and that saved me tracks. And that was you know techniques right. that I developed while doing all these all these radio spots. Yeah. So sure. it made it really simple to do. You know, the the trick was just to figure out what was coming next. Yeah, of course. Man, it's it's <laughs> it's amazing. Sure, do you love the Supreme Team show? It's amazing hearing this and thinking about the old way. Because I mean, I came up late, you know, late eighties, early nineties with a four track machine. I just remember all the stuff that I had to do to try right. to, you know. So for you guys to so you so you get it, you know what I'm. I get I it. I get through. it. Yeah. 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 It, it, it definitely isn't like it used to be. So, and now you know it's just insane because I use Pro Tools or Ableton Live, and I've got maybe 150 tracks going. Exactly. <laughs> As opposed right. to just you know struggling with 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 eight. <laughs> right. I know. It's it's amazing. So, but, let me yeah, ask a quick go question. Ahead. So, you say, Chuck? yeah. So when you all won the contest, what what type of feedback did you all get from Tommy? Were, were they like, "Oh my God, you like this is so amazing"? Like, what pretty was that much. Like? Yeah. I mean, yeah. They they called us up and said, "You, you know, you guys got to come and pick up your prizes," which were uh, t shirts, a hundred dollars in cash, and the record catalog, basically. Oh, and then meeting all of these wonderful people. But we went over to their. Uh, well, first he he. He called me first to tell tell me that we won the contest. So, you know, while I was in the middle of a session, and then he Tom called did? Steve. Yeah, Tom did. Then okay. he called Steve. He says, "Who are you guys? <laughs> Who has a secretary? What DJ has a secretary?" He says, "Well, I'm working at an ad agency." And then the, the light bulb went on. He says, "Oh!" And then when he met us, he said, "You're a couple of white guys." Said, yeah. <laughs> We're a couple of white guys, and we're a little older, maybe. We were like 28, 29, 30, whatever at the time. And and it was the same reaction we got. We met Af um, Arthur Baker and John Roby oh, wow. at the Fun House. And I said, you're a, walk you're a couple of white guys like us. It's like, <laughs> so, so there was that. But the, the, the feedback, the, the great feedback was at, at the contest. There were all these great people that were judges. There was Africa Bambata, Cool DJ Herc, Chef Pettibone. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when I saw this list, I said, Steve, we have to meet these people. So that was one of our really, you know, big goals. But they, what they did is when they, when they played the tapes at the final judging, they, they held ours for last because they knew it was like so much better. Yeah. And the rest of this stuff. And, and it was a, a unanimous applause, apparently. I wish I was there. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. That's so cool. Now, what led to Lesson 2? Uh, that was after a few months of me and Steve ba basking in glory and meeting famous people and, you know, going on limousine tours. Well, no, not really. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, we said, but let's let's do something else. What do you want to do? James, it's got to be James Brown. Yeah. And I think the original idea was to, you know, yeah, yeah. James Brown's greatest screams. So let's, you know, go through. And then it, it evolved into lesson two, which is a tribute to, to James Brown. So it was it was really one of one of the only records, especially back then, that we did that wasn't uh, a commission. Oh, okay. 
where they say, hey, do a remix for us. You know, this was something that we just did on our own and we did it like way back then. And then it was many, then it, it was after we started doing solo work that we started, uh, you know, doing stuff from scratch as opposed to, as opposed to remix stuff. Gotcha. We take you to the Hotel Martinet in Brooklyn where Bobby oh, Millett yeah, and his orchestra so are offering a program of dance music. It's from War of the Worlds, the, the radio broadcasts. Lesson two. I'd like to know, are you really ready for some super dynamite soul? Now, did um, Tommy Boy the issue, uh, Listen, they issued a promo with this? So what happened was uh, we did these, we had this second mix in the can and we said, okay, let's make our own records. So we pressed up 500 records, we put it on our own label our own master mix label and uh that's lesson one on side one lesson two on side two and it wasn't until a year later when they approached us to do the uh what became lesson three and he says well let's put this out and we'll put lessons one and two on the other side because what happened was it was a big project that kind of fell apart when herman kelly said you, you know you can't use my record what the hell are you doing so this whole, it was supposed to be a, a bigger project. The history of hip hop it was going to be a record. It was going to be a wow. book. Wow. So he says, well, let's salvage it by doing this promo record. And they put that promo record out and that became a, a really historic, you know, piece of history. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, Cause I was wondering back then uh, that was way before any of the big sample lawsuits so i was wondering yeah, why it was only yeah. kind of a, i thought they tried was, they tried they tried to to clear all that stuff by lesson three and they had, gotcha. a, they had lawyers and they finally said we can't we just can't do it gotcha. not, you know but don't stop doing what you're doing right 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 Luckily. wow that's interesting yeah that's it interesting. was it, it it's it's amazing it turned out that way because he could have turned around and said you know well forget it we can't do this anymore don't mess with our records you know but right. he was he's a uh he was a record fan he was a collector you know so yeah. it it meant something to him to do it that way yeah wow so what what cool. was the process like you know for for picking the the samples you picked and like oh, how yeah. long did it how long did it take to to make like a lesson one or lesson two lesson one we did in two two days like a saturday and a, came back the next day on a sunday and we had maybe 10 crates of our records with us in the studio and we just made it up as we went along well, what's what do you think next all right what about and it was very linear and that's the way you had to do it back then yeah uh lesson two took a little longer i think that was two weekends and and as and as you go through the years it it gets exponentially longer and longer <laughs> to where things lesson four literally took like 30 years before it it got finished wow because we did that we started lesson four around 87 and we never finished it because i was i had started a new career a new a new uh, studio job I had met my wife, we got married, and she had a daughter, so we had a family, and I just didn't have time to devote like, like we had. And that's when Steve went off and was starting to do some of his records on his own. Right. And then slowly after a while, we, we were able to, to come back again. That's super cool. And th was that around the time that you also ended up, I believe you told me you started working at MTV? MTV that goes back to 81. MTV oh, started okay. in 1981. And the studio that I was working at doing all these radio commercials uh, was run by a guy owned by a guy named Tom Clack. And he was uh, a good a sound effects genius. He, he worked at the BBC and uh, had this amazing collection of records. He had all those KPM records oh, yeah he had yeah. all of them he had all of them and we wow. used we would use those on jobs you know you'd pull out well yeah. i need some christmas music and it needs something that sounds a little hip you know yeah yeah so uh oh now now i i got a little lost here. i was talking about tom clack and i was talking about the, oh the studio so so when mtv was was starting up these were people that we knew 
and they wanted to work with with Tom, you know, developing, you know, getting the channel up and running, developing some new, uh, you know, the look and and promos and stuff like that. So for the first six months, Tom was doing that, and after then, he he says, well, here you can work with Doug DeFranco now as well because they just had too much work to do. So I really started with MTV in '81. Oh, okay. And it was a great crew of people back then. There's some really amazing producers that, you know, all went on. A lot of them went on to Hollywood. One of them, Mark Pellington, who's a big-time Hollywood director now, yeah. too. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, he just interviewed me for a, a documentary he's doing that hopefully will be out around next year. We'll see. Yeah, I, cool. I, yeah, I can't wait for that one. That's going to be cool. It is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, MTV goes way, way back Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I wasn't. I I I knew we had briefly talked about it before, but I and because uh, you were telling me all the amazing people that you ended up you know working with, and uh, through that through that gig. So yeah, I there were. I yeah, wasn't sure were, the time. Well, th- yeah, through MTV and also uh, Columbia Records. I I used to work with a guy named Gary Lucas, who is a is a well known guitar player, and he would bring in people like. Uh, um, uh, B-52s uh, to do to do a radio commercial. Uh, Captain Beefheart was really a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> that was I pretty bet, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there have been all kinds of people, you know, in and out, in and out the studio, some that I've had a, had a chance to uh, to partake of some interesting materials back then <laughs> yes mm, i'm sure so okay so uh steve ends up doing records and you took time off and then what brought you guys back together well we didn't do anything together now, now we were still hanging out all this time we would go out okay. to dinner and gotcha. but it was like to the point where we just want to hang out and it which is what we do now right um what was your question again <laughs> so when did you well I, what i was trying to get at it was what uh when did you decide to or what oh, to get back together to get back to doing the music again well it wasn't in it was like 91 when steve had done the uh the george bush record it's up to you mm-hmm. and i don't i don't recall if i if i asked to to do a mix or he asked i think maybe he asked me to do a mix because they wanted like a, another mix done <laughs> So he brought it into the studio, and I did, and I love that. I don't, I don't know if you've if you've heard it or not, yeah. but it's it's it really good. Dope. It's it's, really it's still good. very timely, and you could almost take George Bush out and put another president in there, and it's the same. Yeah. Which is what you know when when you're a little older, you start to realize. You look back on history, and you start to to see that things never change. Think history keeps repeating itself. It really, really does. Yeah. So I was fascinated by that, and I'm fascinated by that in a project I'm doing now, too, which is actually uh, uh, going back to the Depression and and quoting some people from from the Studs Terkel book, Working. So I'm hoping that that may be the next lesson, and, it, and I think now it'll be a history lesson. I think there's another way to use the term lesson. It's not They're not just music lessons. They're history yeah. lessons that could, be, that could be told, too. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm... I'm very excited about that. I've heard the well, I've heard the just rough mix. A, somebody just bought a record. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. Sweet. <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's see if we Well, uh, yeah, we got to we'll we will talk about the new record that we uh somebody named Corey. I don't know if you're Oh, yes, Corey. Thank you very much. Corey, yeah. Yeah. Corey's, Corey's the man. He says for real cut and paste. Yeah, yeah. You'll, right. I'll get that record Excellent. out real soon. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Thank it's, you. It's, it's, this it's is a like dope a record, Casey Corey. Kasem, you know, we're making connections. <laughs> it's like a telethon almost. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right, without Jerry Lewis. Um, so I got a question for you. So um, obviously you all had to pick the samples and sound bites that you used. Did you all ever get in a situation where one wanted a sample and the other didn't, or you all went back and forth, or... It was pretty much you all were we, aligned the whole time. We're always it's it is pretty amazing that in and it's, it was rare that we ever you know and if we ever said something didn't work we we would agree on it. 
we were always of of one mind. I mean, it's amazing how uh, how how we fit together. That's awesome. So yeah, no, we, we we don't have we never had that problem, we, and we've never had any arguments or fights or misunderstandings, and so it's a pretty it's a pretty damn good friendship, I'd say. Um, when did you guys first realize that you were inspiring a lot of prominent DJs? I mean, was that always kind of a thing? I mean, because no, obviously it wasn't until you, uh, we met until I met uh, Shadow and Chemist. Okay. I think, which would have been sometime in the 90s. And, and I right. feel so embarrassed that I didn't know who they were when they came up. They said, well, Steve says, these guys, you know, I knew that they did lessons, you know, based on what we had done, but I really didn't, I never heard them. I didn't know anything about it. So it was like pretty, pretty cool, you know, because they, they were very, you know, they were treating us very reverent, uh, reverential. Is that the word? word what, what's the word? I'm reverential. Looking for? Yes. Reverentially. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good enough. Close enough. It is good enough. Yeah. It's late. Um, <laughs> so, and to the and now I'm you know I'm a huge fan of them. I mean I think those two guys are just amazing. And then uh, so and 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 anybody that we've met throughout the years, like you know the cold cut guys and the ninja tune crew and you know they they love us and we love them so it's one big love fest i think yeah that's fantastic yeah you you guys inspired so many people um that's how i found your music um because i came into hip-hop a little bit later but then it was through those guys um you know shadow did mm. his his lesson four right yeah he, he did, did a lesson, lesson four right and so then i was like well wait a minute what are these and so then i researched it back and i was like oh okay so it came from and i kind of remembered uh you know in my in my readings and travels about the the tommy boy promos and stuff like that but then that's when i really got into finding your guys stuff so mm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i very, see what steve is cool. steve is saying here uh yes he mentions the record jazz but no jazz came in 98 so we had you know the, the after we did after i mixed uh it's up to you it wasn't until 98 when we did uh the jazzy sensation remix for tommy boy that was for the anniversary set is that what that i was? think so yeah 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 and and then another thing that steve mentioned was uh going back to the mtv train of thought uh he mentions fred's te technique of sound first there's a guy fred uh, fred seibert who uh was one of the one of the founders of mtv and and he his thing was to um do the sound first and actually we were doing that with mtv was was doing because we didn't have any way of syncing up audio and video so the idea was make a good soundtrack once you have a good soundtrack, you can make a good video track. You can cut a good video edit to it. To it and that's yeah. the way we did it, did it for years, was really just like not even worrying about video, making the sound good, and then letting the editor, the video editor, worry about making it look good too. <laughs> right. But, you know, if you have a great video edit but a bad audio track, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound like, you know, it's just not going to work. So it really yeah. helps to to have that have that structure so now so that i've taken us way off off the path here <laughs> no 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 not at all come on we're man. getting it's back getting back to uh when steve and i got back together yeah uh, musically re re reconvened and then reconvened was, uh, was jazz yeah yeah okay so and, and then and then you were um in the 2000s and well right of... after that we did the next year we did uh the sugar hill mix which we call voicemail and that was for oh a, that song is dope a, it was a sugar hill collection uh i i think it was i don't know if it was castle music something there was some company in uk that bought the rights to sugar hill so they they hired us to do a master mix they said and uh pick whatever you want and wow. uh we picked jazzy sensation no that no we, i'm sorry we took we i'm mixing up the the mixing up the records now <laughs> the labels yeah. they didn't say pick what you want they said do what you want so we right. <laughs> you know we just picked our favorite our, our favorite records from sugar hill and and uh 
made that mix and thank you yeah i like that mix a lot too i was just listening to that yesterday and i was say wow it's you did really that? <laughs> really good and then the i think it was the next year there was a record for a dj tony touch and it was a remix of he's the greatest dj which is a remix a record that he that he remixed and then we remixed his ah his remix wow so they were three years in a, in, in a row, and, and they make a nice trio, I think, after the first three lessons. These, these are like another three that kind of work together. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. So it's great that you guys are still, you know, creating, and uh, uh, we, can, we can come to the current. The, the record that Corey just bought is uh, the Craps Game EP, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and that, out on vinyl now and green uh, vinyl green vinyl yes, yes. really so, green vinyl yeah <laughs> it's it's actually a very dope uh a dope color of green you, do you have it there i was gonna grab one but if, I mean, if the, you've got so we get, since we we're on tv here i don't this is not gonna work because it's green oh <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> kind of. Awesome. So we got an invisible. All right, ho hold on. If I get it, yep. the, if I get it the right way, you can see it. That's really funny. Yeah, there you go. There, there it is. Go. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. There it is. Yeah. And the cover will be just as invisible. Yes. Well, they get. Yeah. There you go. They can see it on the, on the band yeah. campaign. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, so let's so let's talk about that. Let's talk about this collection, the Craps Game EP. Yes. And where 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 the inspiration for that came from? Um, Steve, this was uh, Steve started this one. He uh, Steve listens to a lot of audio books and a lot of just a lot of a lot a lot. And he was fond of uh, the author Chester Himes, who um, oh geez, Steve, you're going to have to help me with the title of the book. I don't recall now. Uh, it was a book written i think in the 40s 40s 50s about about uh some nonsense going on up in harlem um no steve's uh, maybe he's not listening um so he sent me the so actually no wait hold on i'm totally wrong he did a demo of of the of the uh of the track that oh, okay. i liked and i said this is great but it really needs a lot of help like the bites needed help and the music you know use some fixing and stuff so he sent me the session the ableton session and i could not uh get it all opened up i said you know what let me just let me let me clean up the bites let me get that all sounding right so i had maybe 60 tracks of bites or something and now everything's sounding good and i just said uh castle records in the uk that was the sugar hill people um so I said, what, what would happen if I just put some new music under this? And I started experimenting and, and it just sort of t started turning into, into this, you know? <laughs> and uh, so what I had done was complete, I wound up completely re replacing the music that Steve had done. Wow. Which was pretty, you know, pretty crazy thing to do and and, I, and I, I felt a little bad but now we had two versions and as you can see on the record I was able to I went back and I kind of remastered Steve's uh, Steve's version to sound a lot better so you've got uh, his original version the OG mix on there right you've got my version which is the remix of what he did and then you've got the version that that Ada did the the Stone Cold Crazy mix right so you know there's uh it's it's a it's a good value i'd say everybody should buy this record because you're getting a lot of good music on this record <laughs> but but it's you know three mixes it's it's and they're all real different and 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 a lot of little bonus items too you know bonus joints on yeah there. i like to put a lot of secret stuff in there for yeah. for fun that's that's actually there's a whole nother project that we'd like to to work on is the black dj project Oh. That was started, uh, I know Monica Lynch had something to do with it, but there was somebody else who helped collect all this stuff. And it's it's a great collection of DJs. I don't know if they go back to the 50s, maybe. It's mostly a lot of the 60s. And um, 
they're all just air checks. They're just like maybe one minute, two minute bites of the DJ. And, and it, it's great stuff because, again, it's wow. history. This is stuff yeah. that you're not going to hear anywhere else unless, you know, it's floating around on the Internet. I'm sure some of them are. Yeah. But we'd like to put in and a lot of that stuff we've used in the mixes since um, since jazz, I think. Oh, wow. And um, so we, we always talk about doing a mix of that and then also putting all all of these DJs uh, air checks on there, too, to so make a nice package. So oh, that's dope. Yeah. So that that's fantastic. that's yeah, it's in the can somewhere. Excellent. <laughs> now it's in the cloud. You you guys haven't. Uh, how, how many times have you guys played out live? Uh, three, four, five, three, four. The first time was I was afraid of performing since I had a really bad experience when I was nine at a guitar recital. It was just awful, and I went home and threw up, and it was it was just bad. So I swore I'd never perform again. And whenever I got up in front of a group of people, I get really nervous. So, call from Steve. Got a call from DJ Shadow. He'd like to op- he'd like us to open up for him at Roseland. So what do you say? You don't say no. You <laughs> say right. yeah. I will do this, and I will I will plow through it, and I did. And uh, that was the first time we performed. It was January two thousand two. And then we played a couple, we opened a couple of times for uh, the Cold Cut guys at Irving Plaza. And then uh, Shadow and Chems came back to Irving Plaza and we did a couple of shows with them in uh, 2008. And then we also played at a, at a, a place that's gone now, the Highline Ballroom. Oh, yeah. We opened up for Negative Land, which was, which was a real honor, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Wow. I remember those guys. Yeah. Yeah. The, they had the the infamous U two, yes, the yeah the uh, the Casey record. Kasem record, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But That's they've done dope. some amazing work, really incredible yeah. stuff. Yeah, very cool. Um, so those no, are I, our only uh, time. Steve Steve has has played out a, a, a fair amount. He's been around the world. He's a yeah. world traveler. He's, he's the world travel guy. Yes. No, that's very, it's very cool, though. Ha, have, has your opinion on playing out, you know, now changed? Oh, yeah. I wanted, I'd, I'd love to do it again. Excellent. Yeah. Definitely. Have to try, have to, try to make that happen. It's an, it's an interesting thing, so. Well, I, you know what I did? I got, I got this thing. Why can't we see this? This is not green. <laughs> What the fuck is going on here? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's, it's gotta, because it's because I'm using this silly background. There we go. Now yeah. you can see it. Yeah. This is go. an Ableton uh, Push Two. Ah. Which is my my excuse to have to uh, get a live set together. So I've actually already started working on a live set. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's cool. That is fantastic. So excellent. Who knows? So how how often do you listen to? the music that you guys put together do you do you go back and listen to it or is it just something that you, you oh yeah revisit? every so often I, I i don't think about listening to it sometimes i i see it on my computer and it's yeah and and uh and it's great because the the longer you're separated from it the less you remember it and doing it and it sort of makes it a different experience enjoying it you can kind of hear it as a fan as opposed to hearing you know every edit that you did right that's a, that's a very good point i like i like coming back to songs <clears throat> when i finish a project and i exhaust all the possibilities i put it away and i don't listen to it for a long while and then i come back to it later and i'm like oh yeah this is this is kind of interesting yeah that's because you, you know you get all you build up all these feelings that you attach to something and you, and you maybe there's something you don't like and it just turns you off and then you're just not in the mood and it's just it's an emotional thing it's indescribable type of thing that and i find a lot of times i can't work on music unless i tricked myself oh i explain I, that <laughs> it's like I know I should be doing something productive, but I'm, I'm just not. So I said, you know what? Let me, what is, let me check out that new compressor that I downloaded. So you load up Ableton and you, and then, and then before you know it, 
you, well, let me put this in the track and see how it sounds. And now you're working and you're doing a whole, you're doing a three hour session. So right. <laughs> I don't know if you ever have that problem, but I do. I, I know there are times where I should be working on something else, but I'm like, I really want to make a beat right now. So yeah, I, yep. I've done that. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I've done that more times than I care to mention, but Oh, by the yeah. way, I have to say now, because I know there's somebody mentioning, mentioning Davy J. I think, I think Chuck was um, uh, earlier. Davy oh, J oh, is your son. Line. Flatline. Yeah. Davy. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to just have to say that your son, he did an amazing job on the, uh, on the new uh, Impossible's mega mix. Oh, thank you. Because uh, you, you know, I, I, I cut together all that music. You sent it to Chuck. Chuck did this this incredible set of raps on there. And when we needed more bites, it was Davey who pulled out all that stuff. And he, I mean, he, it took him just like a few hours and he, he made the rest of the record. Yeah, he and I, I, I called him in and I said, because, <laughs> because, because he's been, you know, he's like a super fan now of of his dad obviously music. yeah and um i called him in and i'm like i help me out here kid you're listening to this stuff way more than i am so you know <laughs> what what do we got what's this I, and, and it was like i could think of things like bits i'd be like <clears throat> there's a line like this what's this what's this from and he'd be like oh that's from such and such song right, oh that's right. what it was to be you know <laughs> mm -hmm. or that's from circle of lies or what you know maybe you should pull something from this dad i'm like okay and then we go in and you know yeah, yeah i'll keep he, i'd keep him around if i were you i think yeah, he's right. <laughs> he's an asset <laughs> the, the, i love the kids because they're they're a good test um they're a good barometer mm -hmm. so when i when i make something and i play it if they start they start dancing around. I'm like, okay, that's good. That's a keeper. If they're just like, if it's, they lose attention, just, yeah, walk away from it. You know, they're like, like it's not even playing. I'm like, all right, I, mm -hmm, I got mm -hmm. more. But yeah, yeah. So no, thank, you, you brought up, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You you brought up kids. So do do you have children? Not of my own. I have a stepdaughter who's now in way into her forties. So. Uh... I've not ex had the experience of having young kids. Though when I met her, gotcha. she was she was nine. So, but so what uh, did she think about all of what you did with with you know music and whatnot and um, people that are in your family? What what have they kind of thought about everything? That I think done? A, there's 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 some of them. Hopefully there's hope, hopefully my cousin Adrian's listening tonight though. She may not be. I think there some of them are amused by it. Others are bemused by it. Uh, <laughs> I know my mom was always, she always thought it was kind of fun. And she, you know, though she was the one when I called her up and said, Mom, they, these guys asked us, us to play at Roseland. Oh, you don't want to do that. You want to do that? So when she said that, it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do want to do that. <laughs> Was she, was she remembering the uh, the guitar recital? Is that why she was thinking no, that? No, <laughs> I, it's I don't know. I I don't know how to describe. It. I would have to like really go into like a whole dis, oh. you know description of my mom's personality. Gotcha. I miss her. I miss her desperately, but she was one of a kind. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But it um, sounds like she was supportive of what you wanted to do with music. Incredibly. And, and... I, I was just saying to my wife tonight that they never said a word about like any like a girlfriend or my first wife. Like, well, they loved my first wife, but they didn't like my my second girlfriend. But you know, she never. They would never say anything about that or about anything. They kind of just let me do what I wanted. They let me kind of flounder, especially in the beginning when I was going to a community college for a couple of years and not doing anything. And then I, you know, went to a studio and, and got an internship there. And, and I was still living at home. Luckily, they supported me for a few years. Uh, no, they were all incredibly supportive. Very lucky. Oh, that was great. I didn't absolutely. I, I just, I just love that because um, I didn't, I didn't realize at the time that when you called Steve about the contest, you said, "Yeah, here's a contest. We're gonna win." So that's. Awesome. I did say that. I really, you know, I just just you just have that feeling you know about these certain th events in your life yeah yep very cool. oh i can hear if you hear the cat willow 
<laughs> we have this nine-year-old cat that we adopted, and you'd think she's nine months old. Oh. She really just bounces off the wall, and she. This is like she's getting ready for bed now. I think. Yeah. But she'll have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> that's she, right, she, my guy. She, she got time. She got time. Um, yeah, that's right. Any any wish list of artists you'd like to work with, Doug? Cut chemist. Ah. I want to work with Lucas. He he is one of my favorite DJs, and I really really love what he what he does. He's super and I, dope. Yeah. Um, I can't say I I I'm thinking of anybody else at the at the moment. He's the one that that first pops up to mind. Oh, that's that's a that's a good choice. That's a good choice. We'll have to uh, we'll tag him in the uh, replay comments. Definitely. Tell him, tell him, you know, make it happen. No, that's good. I mean, we've got sway. I mean, oh, I we, know. We, 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 we've sold a record tonight. Yeah, so <laughs> that's right. I have to give it don't to you. Don't underestimate the I owe you guys something, don't I? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no, you, you, not at all. Nope, you, pay, you paid us by showing up. So. <laughs> that's right. I that's, didn't even have to go anywhere. I'm here, I'm here in my studio. That's the, that's that's the beauty of this show, man. That's, that's the right. Of the show. Um, real quick, I like the clutch and stick said, I put a Big Daddy Kane on like 10 years ago for my younger brothers in the car when they were in high school. They were like, what is that noise referring to scratching? <laughs> I knew things were going bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, when I was younger, I was at the National Record Mart with my dad and they were playing um two live crew had done a, a cover of yakety yak for the arnold schwarzenegger danny devito movie twins oh I don't my know god heard that yeah and uh ah jb bought the vinyl thank you that's Jennifer. what's up jb thank all right thank you um it's two records sold tonight yep yeah we're, we're doing we're getting somewhere now but but anyway, Two Live Crew did this cover of Yakety Yak, and um, and it had the scratching in it, and my dad had the same reaction. He was like, what the hell's wrong with the song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Dad, that's amazing. It's a, you know, And I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm just not going to. No, uh, whenever I played my records for my mom, she just thought it was all great because it was me. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> scratching or no scratching. Now, do you do any scratching? Not really. I, uh, as I was saying before, when I, when I was doing all these commercials off of turntable, I, I would have, I would queue up the record. So I would essentially right. be scratching, but it was just to, to find the beat. Right. And once I I'd scratch it and find it, I hold it there and then I, I'd, I'd pot up the record and I throw the fader up and, and let the record fly. So that was about as far as I got. And sometimes you get those, what did Chuck call them? Those, those, uh. That kind of scratch, sloppy, sloppy scratch, oh, yeah. yeah. Sloppy sloppy scratch. Scratch. Yep. So I can kind of do that, yeah. The sloppy <clears throat> scratch. Oh, I'm, a, I'm evidently a master at it. So the nice thing is, if I'm scratching and recording, then you can go back and edit and make it sound like you're actually scratching. I do it all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So sometimes what Daddy O calls itchy fingers. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> Very true. One. Yeah, I like that. Very true. Yeah. So what are you, so what are you listening to now? What, what moves you like right now that inspires you to be like, I'm going to keep, keep doing this music thing. I was that feedback there. Yeah. It's uh, my, it's the, it's the music. I was, I'll put, I'll put the lesson. Three oh, up. okay. Um, I've been to tell you what I've been really listening to lately is the new, um, the newest, the remix of the George Harrison album, All Things Must Pass. So this has nothing to do with anything that, you know, music we ever make. But this was a record I've always loved, and I, and it's great to hear a different perspective because they, they kind of changed the mix around because they realized they can't, you know, what's the point of doing it the same way, you know? You want to hear it in a different way. So they brought out some different, you know, different layers that you didn't hear before and... So I've been I've been binging on that. I'll tend to binge on a record until I get sick of it. Yeah, I do the same thing. I haven't yeah. heard that yet. I'll have to check it out. It's great. Yeah, I've I've been. Did you get to see any of the? Uh, oh, the Get Back TV get back. show. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't watched the third part yet, but yeah, that see, I'm watching that and I'm re reminded of 
what uh, inspired me to get into this business also was seeing the Beatles. Ah. You know, as a kid, seeing the Beatles and then finally it gets to a point where you, you see them in the studio and you see them making records. And then there were other bands doing that. The band, which is one of my favorite bands also, they did that on their second album. They had all these pictures of them in this room that they that they tricked out to be their studio. It's like, yeah, yeah. And I was already playing with tape machines and then I just got some better equipment, better mics and, and tape machines and I started doing it, you know? Yeah. So watching watching that and and it kind of gets me all excited again. I know, so yeah, man. really that that I would have to say that if, if it was anything that's getting me inspired, it's that. And I'm holding the, uh, off on the third part. The the thing the thing about the get back uh, stuff is just I was really I don't know what I expected, but the fact that the film you know is obviously digitally remastered. And mm. the sound is cleaned up and everything, mm -hmm. and it looked it looks so beautiful. Contemporary. Yeah, yeah it, it looks, looks like amazing. it was shot on it was shot on sixteen, right? And they think it looks like it was shot on thirty five. Yeah, yeah, it does. It looks it looks amazing, and the fact that the only thing that gives it away is the kind of the fashion sense of the time. But you know, the of, the really amazing thing is the history of the film. You're sitting there, and and he and Paul McCartney starts playing, and he starts writing "Get Back." <laughs> You know, know, or they're it's coming amazing. up with ideas. You know, George Harrison says something in the way she, I don't know. And they say something in the way she's like a watermelon or, you know, just coming up with all these ideas. Like, wow, yeah. this is, I mean, you know, you know how, the, with the, how the creative process works, but to see those songs. Yeah, that, that we've process. known all our lives. Yeah, yeah. 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 And there, and the, yeah, my brother, we watched the first part over the Thanksgiving we were down in. Chuck's neck of the woods, Louis Louisville. Did I, am I getting better? <laughs> Louis, no, okay. I'm not gonna try anymore. But um, Louisville. Okay. yeah. So um, and uh, so my brother and uh, and Davy. Davy's a big Beatles fan, so he was all about that. And uh, we're sitting there watching it, and Paul starts writing "Get Back," and my brother <laughs> paused it and he turned at me. He goes, "Wait a minute, he's writing that song right yeah. now." Just yeah. like that. I was like, yeah, man. He goes, that song. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. how it started. And he's that like, doesn't and he's, exist anywhere in musical. Hit. I mean, you don't see that anywhere else in film. Yeah. I've never seen that that moment happen. No, it's a it's amazing that 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 the document of that all that exists at all. So, yeah, very, very, very cool. Super cool stuff. I know what I'm going to watch when we get off here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I got to go back because I. I've only seen the first one. I got to go back and, and yeah. check out the rest. Oh, you haven't seen the second part yet? Not yet. Oh, okay. Then I won't. I won't spoil it. There's like an interesting something that happens, and it's pretty amazing. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, you gotta. You, it's. I. I wish I could tell you, but I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. When when we talk again, I'll hopefully yeah. I'll have watched it. I'm sure. Yeah. Exactly. So. so okay. Yeah. More questions. I'm sure that you have some other burning questions. Yeah, the, anybody in the chat also, if there are any questions yeah. out there. Uh, what oh, is JB this was, on? She was asking, yeah, so I think that's on uh, Disney Plus, isn't it? Yeah, Disney Plus. Yes. Yep. Yep. And I'm, yeah, I'm so. sure they're going to have to release it to the world at some point. Oh, yeah, it can't right. just stay on Disney. I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure. The, the world is on Disney, I think, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Per, per my wife. <laughs> um. There was a question, uh, I think it was Cheese earlier, wanted to know what you thought of Jive Bunny and the Mix Masters. I do not Did know of Jive Bunny and the Mix Masters. Oh, well, interesting. You may have to do a little uh, little, little checking out of that. Okay. Know, and, re and report back. I certainly will. And let us, let us know. I'm always up for something that I haven't heard. I can't say it's something new because I, I still discover music that's, you know, really old for the yeah, first right. time. I'm just going uh, back Super Rhymes. The, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Al J. Super Rhymes from the late, great Jimmy Spicer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. that record. Oh, yeah. The more you put down, the more you pick up. Well, you give us some of the craps game. So, that's so great. 
it's so great to hear it coming over the microphone and the speakers in the same room that I made made the record. I know, pretty awesome. cool, huh? <laughs> um, she says uh, they were circa 1989, and you may have inspired them. So, ah, okay. And what is this, Mister Double D? Have you remixed anything of Motown, Parliament Funkadelic, or Aretha Franklin? Not oh, as a not as a piece. I mean, they've they've been used in our records definitely uh but i've never we've never done like a motown record or a parliament record those are all great ideas especially parliament oh man that would be great oh p mm -hmm. and i got this great collection of motown instrumentals i don't know if you've, you've ever seen that they're floating oh. it's like it's it's like the backing tracks of, yeah. of all these great old motown records oh wow. yeah yeah i saw they started to release those did they release them because I, th I think I just... so. I, th I, th I think digitally, yeah. Because I think I, th I think Chuck sent them sent me a bunch of them. But yeah, I don't know if they're I don't know if they have any hard copies, but I think they're floating around out there digitally. Mm. So um, and multi tracks. I have a whole interesting collection of of multi tracks. Ah, some Motown are... stuff, Marvin Gaye, and I don't know if you've ever seen those floating around. I, I got a couple Michael Jackson ones. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah. I got the um, Queen Bohemian Rhapsody. Wow, I don't have that one. That is sick. Yeah, I bet. Because <laughs> you can figure out, you can kind of see how they built it. You know how they kind of bounce yeah. back and forth from track to track. And wow, that's super cool. I'll yeah, have to I was share them excited. with you. Yeah, please. Uh, I'd like to check that out. I was I was excited. I got the 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 uh, Rock with You multi track. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've always wondered if you connected with Jack Dangers from Meat Beat Manifesto. I feel like he was influenced no. by your material, especially the early Meat Beat stuff. No, not at all. Mm. She says Meat Beat Manifesto word. Yeah, I have a a good friend who who drummed for the for the Meat Puppets. Oh, okay. I remember my, the Meat Puppets. Yeah, my my second uh, assistant, Ted Marcus, he's a drummer, and he wound up working on a film documentary for the Meat Puppets, wow. not telling them that he was a big fan. Oh. So <laughs> during the making of, of the documentary, the drummer quit. And uh, at one point, he says, well, you know, they, you know, all I can go, I can, you know, he kind of got in on the drum set, you know, like to like set up some levels or something and he started playing the song and they all like looked at each other and they hired him on the spot and he was like their drummer for a few years oh, so it's fantastic. the same story like you know ada and uh you know fans yeah. get in touch with their get in touch which, with their idols which is so which is so super cool mm -hmm. um that's interesting that yeah flatline measure jack <clears throat> dangerous jack has done some work with chuck as well Oh. Remixes, yeah. I mean, I know the I know their names. It's just music I'm not familiar with. Yeah, gotcha. I feel like if I look up Meat Beat Manifesto, I need to do it on a different browser. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should be all right. You should get music. Jen will be like, "What were you looking at? What were you looking at? What is this Meat Beat? Just make yeah. sure you put in the manifesto. You know, <laughs> spell everything correctly." Yeah, exactly. I won't yeah. look that up on my work laptop. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to. <laughs> Not don't safe for work. <laughs> no. So, so what's coming up? You already mentioned that you got the um, the next lesson. You know the. Well, the I'm working on that track, and yeah. uh, that's that's pretty well along. I could I could finish it any time I decide to. You know, but I like to stretch things out and live with it for a while. <laughs> yes um uh, there's another thing th th when steve and i performed we did a set called who owns culture and i'm trying to i'm trying to uh, make that i was even th thinking of, of putting that out on this oh i haven't we haven't talked about the box set ah right i don't know should i not mention that no, uh, we can talk about it a little bit we're you know it's in the planning stages there's a planning stages of a, of a box set I'll, I'll I'll say that, and I, I was thinking one of the records could 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 be that, but I I gotta Let's act go. really quick. Yeah, time is wasting. Yes, time. <laughs> time I mean, is this, of the essence. These records take like nine months now to 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 get made. Well, yeah, that's the that's the issue with uh, supply chains and everything. Yeah, and, it's crazy. Yeah, getting longer and longer to manufacture vinyl. 
I mean, when like when that. the Beatles, when, in, in, there's one scene in in the movie you'll see uh, where they're they're listening to "Get Back," and one of them, I think Paul or, or John, says, "Why don't we put this out a sing as a single? We could do it next week." It's like we <laughs> could put it out as a single next week, and that's what they would do. They could do it. They could stop the presses, buy yeah. out, you know, and just press up millions of records on the spot. And uh, yeah, it was a different oh, world amazing. back then. Yeah. Yeah, of course, there were a lot more, you know, record plants around, and well, that is true. And even even though <clears throat> you know vinyl has had that resurgence over the past 10, 15 years, um, well, ten years, um, and plants have started reappearing again, it's just uh, uh, now it's, that now that's overloaded with, uh, you know, um, well, the major <laughs> like, stuff. Yeah, like yeah, Taylor Swift stuff. goes in there, and or Adele, and and wants a million, a half a million records made, and yeah, yeah, it's gonna put everybody else out. Yep, or Fleetwood Mac reissues and stuff like oh, that. Oh, just know. what we need, you know. <laughs> 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 I knew, I knew we were in trouble. I yeah, knew we were in trouble when, um, when I went to a record shop and they had a brand new pressing of Herb Alpert's Whipped Cream and Other Delights because really I was brand like. New. Because I was I, like, hey, I love that record as a kid. Well, of course. And, <laughs> you know, and the cover. Not, and, yeah. But, but you can go to any thrift shop and find 20 of them. Yeah. You know, it's like that record's everywhere. Well, you know? there's a sucker born every minute, as P.T. Barnum I, said. Yep. That's indeed. Right. But Herb yep. Alpert, man, that, I mean, Herb Alpert not only was making hit records, but he was all over the place. I mean, uh, Oh no, he didn't do the Pink Panther theme. That was Henry Mancini. That was Henry Mancini. Yeah. What else? Uh, Herb Alpert did the um, the theme from uh, the date. Was it the dating game or the newlywed game? So and it was, it was all over the place, you know. So then he had yeah. these records that were really kind of novelty records, you know, in a lot of yeah. ways. And and I I was always a big fan of anything that was a novelty record. Right. So the, um, yeah. He did. Um, do you remember the really bad James Bond Casino Royale spoof from? Sure. Like 60, oh yeah, sixty-seven or so. Yeah, yeah he yeah, did the yeah, music yeah. for that. Yep. Yeah, because I was the a music, music's great. By the way, I the was film, a Bond not so much, but I was a Bond know. fan back then. And it was a big deal because Goldfinger came out in nineteen sixty-three, and I was nine years old. Yeah. And my dad took me to to see it at the theater because I was wow. really I wanted to see it so bad, and it just that was a big influence too. <laughs> right. So when Casino Royale came out, I was like, I loved anything James Bond until that. <laughs> no, I it was it was a fun movie. It was a silly movie. It wasn't you know, it wasn't a spy movie, but it was. Yeah, it's it's very silly. I mean, I mean, yeah. there's a, there's some parts that that are kind of funny. It's just it's it's as a film. It, it was of those those films in the '60s that were these uh, had mo these multiple stars. You know, they put like yeah. ten famous people in it and make this blockbuster film. Yeah, exactly. And now you can't find t ten good stars to put together to make a film like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely. Definitely different. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi yeah. Hype Style mentions Diamonds That Are a Girl's Best Friend, Janet Jackson, and Herb Alpert. I remember that record, man. Oh, no. Played the hell out of that from the 80s. <laughs> yep. I'll trade you a golden gun for some reason. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, thoughts on Foreign Exchange, Little Brother. I think we need more work like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Are you up on Little Brother? Do you know those nope. guys? No. Nope. Ah, hip hop guys from North Carolina. That's uh, Ninth Wonder. That's where he got his start. The producer. Send me links. Send yeah, me an man. email with links. That's what I need. Yeah, definitely. Because every so often I say I'm, I want to hear something I haven't heard. I need something new. I'll know where to go. I, yeah, of course. Hey, man. All you got to do is ask. We can send you all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, I'm open. The door's open. And as I always say that to everybody else, if anybody ever has any questions, you can hit us up on the contact form at the ddski.com website. ddski.com is our home. And if you hit, if you join up on the contact form, you'll be on the list. And then once or twice a year when something happens, you'll get an email. Nice. 
Hey, real quick about the box set. I heard that you found some demo, some early demos, some early yes. the stuff that predates the lessons. Hold on. Ooh. Ugh, God, these damn things are heavy. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is the original. This is the 24 track tape we can see in here. Yeah, hold in front of you. There yeah. you go. Wow. This is the original lesson four that we started in 1987 and never finished. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, it did, it, it got out on a bootleg. I think we, we gave a cassette to somebody and there's a really bad bootleg floating around. So I, ne I need to transfer this and, and remix it and, and release it to the world because it's just as valid as, as the new lesson four. It's just a lot more basic. Yeah. And, oh, that's awesome. uh, and then this is uh <laughs> people are losing their minds in the chat <laughs> this is this is the it's up to you 24 track this the you know the the bush record i was talking about i want to wow. remix this because this never got released on vinyl wow so there's those and then i i've just uh i've been finding a couple of little pieces from around the the jazz era okay um I've got another tape that I need to I need to rescue because it's it's an old tape that needs to be baked and and transferred. There was a my first mix, my first uh, DJ mix I did in 1981. Wow! At that studio I was working at, and it was f with uh, the three records were uh, "Make That Move." Fantastic Voyage and It's a Love Thing. They were three records that were on the Solar label of in, yeah. in L.A. Yeah, and they're great records. They were great dance records. And the thing, you know, I'm in, I was I was doing uh, radio spots for it, and I realized that they all sounded kind of the same because they probably yeah, had the all, same band on it. Yeah, they're all in the same vein, right? Yeah, so, in the same yeah. vein. So I said I could mix. We could mix these together. And I was working with a guy named Greg Bruce who was working at RCA Records. He was the, he was my client and we worked on it together and we made this mix called Make Fantastic Love that I sent to Shep Pettibone at, uh, I don't know if it was Kiss FM or KTU at the time and he put it right on the air. Wow. And called me up and said, how did you do that? So I had to explain my, my multi-track process. <laughs> I went, oh yeah. So this is something that I haven't heard in, I don't know, 30 years. It's sitting in, I have it in the box. I just have to send it and have it uh, transferred. But it's it's my first mix. It's not really a Double D and Steinsky mix, but. That's okay. That's it all right. is, yeah. <laughs> we, That's cool. we, want, we want that box to be a comprehensive overview you know as as much as we can of your work you know to celebrate your work you know there's there's other things that. in there there's some stuff that uh there's a list there's a list of things yeah it's exciting man it's, it's uh, i'm really looking forward to it so, so uh, Me too? sound of los angeles yes yes solar records yep and um uh, trying to think of what else I'm, I'm leaving out here now that we're running out of time Oh, it's okay. <clears throat> Slim Ruthless says, love all the lesson tracks. Yep. Thanks, Thanks Slim. brother. So do I. I'll try <laughs> to keep them coming. We'll try to make another one. Yeah. Though, you know, I've, I've been asked about it, and I always like to say that I think everything we've done is a lesson in a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's usually it's, you know, there is a theme, whether it's an artist or a label or or whatever, so... And that's also another another reason I, I don't usually broadcast the samples we use. If anybody wants to know, I'm happy to, to tell. But it's sort of like, well, kind of use it as, it's a little puzzle. F see if you can find mm -hmm. it, you know? Yeah. But it's you better, can always it's ask. It's better that way. It's better It's that more way. fun that way. Yeah. Because then you get well, led I mean, down this rabbit hole, you know? That That's what I always loved about the PE tracks in the Bomb Squad days. Mm. I mean, so when I would listen to the lessons, I was like, oh, my Find, God. Yeah, like, what are those, what is that soul, sound? Like, all that. What is that sound right there? Where is that from? I know. Yeah. yeah. I no, they make it. They make great shit. Oh, yeah. man. I, I asked Chuck once, and I don't remember which song it was for, but I was like, um, 
I said, what what did you guys use there? Oh, it was for Brothers Are Gonna Work It Out. I was like, what, yeah. what did you, I can't figure it out. And he said, oh, I think it's this. And, uh, and I was like, okay. So I went and listened to what he told me. And I'm and like, it's not. Oh, I, I, but then I heard something. I'm like, okay, I think so. But <laughs> like what they did to it, I have no idea how it got from there to <laughs> where it ended up. It's amazing. So, yeah, there's stuff I don't remember. There's a, there's a sample in lesson one that I, we can't, we don't remember where it came from. <laughs> oh, there's, wow. a, there's these voices. That's right. That's right. That show you're right. That's right. They show you. And it's like, where the fuck did we get that? And it's like, <laughs> someday, right. maybe someday it'll it'll turn up. But yeah, oh man, I, I uh, it's that, one of those just, lost that, lost memories. That drives that drives me nuts sometimes because I'll find an old beat or something like that I never did anything with, and I'll be like, oh, this is great, but I didn't keep track of what it was. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. What did I use here? Because I mm-hmm. don't remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel your pain. Just be, just be happy that you've got it recorded, that you have it saved at all. Exactly. I know. Yeah, I got to archive as you go along. Yes. Mm-hmm. So true. Save early, save often. Because I'm <laughs> yes. bad. I, I don't label things. I'll just record stuff in willy-nilly, and then it's like, all right, I don't remember, but I'm using it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I had I was the same way because you just kind of you get an idea and you just want to go. Yeah. Yeah. And oh man. And now I'm like, okay, at least make a note in the file name or something. Oh geez. What's this? I just found out the main sample for Brothers Gonna Work It Out from a friend of mine playing on a Twitch broadcast. Great. So that yeah, that's what we're that's Yeah, that's what yeah. That's, that's part of the game. Yeah. Part of the game. Awesome. I hope it's playing on a Twitch broadcast because those young cats need to understand. <laughs> <laughs> They gotta learn. They gotta That's know. Right. <laughs> oh my god! That's why yeah. we need more lessons. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell them. Wow. Absolutely. Well, Douglas, thank you so much for being here, taking the time Turned to join out. us tonight. My great pleasure. This was a lot of fun, and even if this wasn't broadcast, it was a great conversation. Definitely. <laughs> we will have to do it again. Yeah. At some point in time. I'm sure there'll be more more things we can we could drag up. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully, it'd be nice to get you and Steve on here both. So. Yeah, I think Steve would love to do it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. We will. We, will we could do a uh, kind of stump the DJ where C Doc has to figure out where you're pulling your samples from. Oh, gee. Oh man, they, uh, he'll never win. <laughs> no, no chance. I'm sorry. I think we got some samples nobody would ever under nobody would ever get. I know, I know you do. Like, <laughs> yeah. Some of that stuff, some of that stuff, I'm just like, wow, it's 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 mind boggling. Because then some of it, I'm just like, I, what is that? You know? <laughs> We're but not that's saying. That, I love that. I love I, I love that. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. I love it when there's enough little bits of familiarity there that you're like, oh, I got that. I know what that is. Well, that's what it's all about. It's making music that sounds familiar or that you know, even if you. You don't know it. Yes. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of, you know, I think that's what's in the back of my mind all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I'm just, you know, I'm just taking inspiration from all over the place, like most, like all musicians do. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So a lot of yes. it from James Brown. That's all. Well, and that's all right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I mean, if you're going to, yeah. if you're going to pull from someone, pull from the best. Exactly. Right. You know? I've got a James right. Brown eight track. Uh, really? Yeah. We'll have to talk about this later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's. Well, thanks Let for being on the show, Doug. Like, I'm I'm a super fan now. Like, I'm so glad that 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 I got to meet you and and you were on the show. And I I look forward to reading more and hearing more. Uh, about you and the one and only Steve Steinsky, for sure. Thank you so much. It's a, great to meet you too. It's yeah, good to have thanks. a new new friend. Thanks, right. Doug. And and um, yeah, like I said, we'll do it again sometime. So thanks for thanks for coming through, staying up with us and the and the chat friends. Yeah, thanks everybody. It was really great to you know. Thanks for you know for for logging in and and saying something and. Thanks, DD. I love your cuts. Thank you, Corey. I love you too. (laughs) 
a way to sample. I don't want to say too much here. I've got a big mouth. <laughs> and also motor motorcades motorcade sped on was so intriguing yeah that steve steve made some great records i was thinking of including those in this set too yeah we those should those early really steinsky should. records yeah yeah we'll we'll yeah, discuss we, it yes yeah I, th I think shout so. out to clutch and stick hit the like button yes please tell all your friends uh that that are down with some good interviews and and meeting some cool cool ass peeps for sure yeah tell them about the show yeah, and we'll be back show. next week at uh, 8.30 p.m. Uh, next yep. Tuesday night, and we will decide who's going to be on. So, <laughs> oh, um, Yeah, hopefully, um, i got to remind him, so hopefully uh, Mike G. from the Jungle Brothers will have Oh, nice. From the Jungle yeah. Brothers, you know, because that's what we do. We didn't even yeah. discuss the Jungle but, Brothers tonight. I thought we were going to get on that tip. But... Yeah, so we'll have to save that. We may have to save that. Maybe I'll have, to, Did... I'll have to call. Yeah, I'll, to, I'll, uh, I'll log in next week. Okay. Did you did you talk to Mike? Yes. Excellent. Mm hmm Excellent. Oh man. Anxious to see what comes of that. Yep, me too. <laughs> we might sell another couple of records. How long do we have to stay on to do that? Let's see. If we stay on till midnight, let, let, we could do a telethon, you know? <laughs> we could. <laughs> that's what that's see, what we'll do. When we put see how on late we could set. stay up. Yeah. When we put on the box set, we'll do the, the double D and Steinsky telethon. They'll say, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll just talk and, you know, as long as we possibly can until we fall over until like tomorrow at like five <laughs> in the afternoon. That was episode one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, oh, guys. Right. Good. Thank Maybe you, Douglas. Whoa. All right, Joe. Oh, oh shit. Don't, I'm okay. don't, don't destroy the studio. I'm okay. I'm the okay. Ableton is down for the count. No, that wasn't the Ableton. Thank God. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, take care. All right. Sleep tight. You Speak to you soon. All, All right. right. Take care. Peace. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for joining. What a show. I mean, that was awesome. Absolutely. Was Freaking amazing. Good call on that. Good call on, on bringing him in. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Big shout out to, to Doug and, and also Steinsky, Steve, Steve Stein. Yeah. Steve Stein, two, Steinsky. Two interesting cats for sure. Well, y'all, it's been another, I mean, quasi kept you on time again tonight, which is shocking. Um, yeah. You did a good I job. That you like to get in uh, to it. It looks like we had great engagement tonight. Really yeah. want to thank all the folks that keep showing up. So many to, uh, so many um, people that are, are supporting the show. We really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, thanks for coming through and 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 chatting and throwing out questions and comments and all that stuff. Makes the show that much better. And uh you know, Absolutely. We're gonna keep, keep on rolling through, talking hip hop and uh you know, learn a little something JB along the way. Be up on my bat phone. I'll have to check check after the show, JB. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah. Good. All right, y'all. Well, until next time we meet again. <laughs> What's the matter, you kidding? Take us out with some Double D and Stein speech. What's the matter, you kidding? What's up? I told you to stay cool. Peace till next week, y'all. Thanks. It's C-Doc again.